Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Monday, August 22nd, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Yesterday, we saw that Ahithophel and Hushai gave Absalom conflicting advice on how to uh, defeat David's men. When Ahithophel saw that his plan was not accepted by Absalom, he knew that Absalom's rebellion was doomed for defeat. And so that's why he went home and hanged himself, because he knew that his future was most definitely going to go toward him being tried and then probably executed for treason against David once David's men defeated Absalom's men. Well, today we're going to see that Ahithophel was correct in his assessment. Um, Absalom's men are indeed going to be defeated by David and his men. And in the process, Absalom himself is going to be killed. David reviewed his troops and appointed commanders of thousands and of hundreds over them. He then sent out the troops, a third under Joab, a third under Joab's brother Abishai, son of Zeruiah, and a third under Ittai of Gath. The king said to the troops, I must also march out with you. You must not go, the people pleaded. If we have to flee, they will not pay any attention to us. Even if half of us die, they will not pay any attention to us because you are worth 10,000 of us. Therefore, it is better if you support us from the city. Now we'll do whatever you think is best, the king replied to them. So he stood beside the city gate while all the troops marched out by hundreds and thousands. The king commanded Joab, Abishai, and Ittai, treat the young man Absalom gently for my sake. All the people heard the king's orders to all the commanders about Absalom. Then David's forces marched into the field to engage Israel in battle, which took place in the forest of Ephraim. Israel's army was defeated by David's soldiers, and the slaughter there was vast that day, 20,000 dead. The battle spread over the entire area, and that day the forest claimed more people than the sword. Absalom was riding on his mule when he happened to meet David's soldiers. When the mule went under the tangled branches of a large oak tree, Absalom's head was caught fast in the tree. The mule under him kept going, so he was suspended in midair. One of the men saw him and informed Joab. He said, I just saw Absalom hanging in an oak tree. You just saw him? Joab exclaimed. Why didn't you strike him to the ground there? I would have given you ten silver pieces and a belt. The man replied to Joab, Even if I had the weight of a thousand pieces of silver in my hand, I would not raise my hand against the king's son. For we heard what the king commanded you, Abishai and Ittai. Protect the young man Absalom for me. If I had jeopardized my own life, and nothing is hidden from the king, you would have abandoned me. Joab said, I'm not going to waste time with you. He then took three spears in his hand and thrust them into Absalom's chest. While Absalom was still alive in the oak tree, ten young men who were Joab's armor bearers surrounded Absalom, struck him, and killed him. Joab blew the ram's horn, and the troops broke off their pursuit of Israel because Joab restrained them. They took Absalom, threw him into a large pit in the forest, and raised up a huge mound of stones over him. And all Israel fled, each to his own tent. When he was alive, Absalom had taken a pillar and raised it up for himself in the king's valley, since he thought, I have no son to preserve the memory of my name. So he named the pillar after himself. It is still called Absalom's monument today. Haimaaz, son of Zadok, said, Please let me run and tell the king the good news that the Lord has vindicated him by freeing him from his enemies. Joab replied to him, You are not the man to take good news today. You may do it another day, but today you aren't taking good news because the king's son is dead. 
Joab then said to a Cushite, Go tell the king what you have seen. The Cushite bowed to Joab and took off running. However, Ahimaaz, son of Zadak, persisted and said to Joab, No matter what, please let me also run behind the Cushite. Joab replied, My son, why do you want to run since you won't get a reward? No matter what, I want to run. Then run, Joab said to him. So Ahimaaz ran by way of the plain and outran the Cushite. David was sitting between the city gates when the watchman went up to the roof of the city gate and over to the wall. The watchman looked out and saw a man running alone. He called out and told the king. The king said, if he's alone, he bears good news. As the first runner came closer, the watchman saw another man running. He called out to the gatekeeper, look, another man is running alone. This one is also bringing good news, said the king. The watchman said, the way the first man runs looks to me like the way Ahimaaz, son of Zadak, runs. This is a good man. He comes with good news, the king commented. Ahimaaz called out to the king, all is well, and paid homage to the king with his face to the ground. He continued, blessed be the Lord your God. He delivered up the men who rebelled against my lord the king. The king asked, is the young man Absalom all right? Ahimaaz replied, when Joab sent the king's servant and your servant, I saw a big disturbance, but I don't know what it was. The king said, move aside and stand here. So he stood to one side. Just then the Cushite came and said, may my lord the king hear the good news. The Lord has vindicated you today by freeing you from all who rise up against you. The king asked the Cushite, is the young man Absalom all right? The Cushite replied, I wish that the enemies of my lord, the king, along with all who rise up against you with evil intent, would become like that young man. The king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber above the city gate and wept. As he walked, he cried, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom. If only I had died instead of you, Absalom, my son, my son. Yesterday we saw Paul begin to defend his ministry against those who styled themselves as super apostles. Today, Paul is going to continue that defense and talk about the many different things he has had to endure as an apostle of Christ. I wish you would put up with a little foolishness from me. Yes, you do, do put up with me. For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy, because I have promised you in marriage to one husband to present a pure virgin to Christ. But I fear that, as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your minds may be seduced from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if a person comes and preaches another Jesus, whom we did not preach, or you receive a different spirit, which you had not received, or a different gospel, which you had not accepted, you put up with it splendidly. Now I consider myself in no way inferior to those super apostles. Even if I am untrained in public speaking, I am certainly not untrained in knowledge. Indeed, we have in every way made that clear to you in everything. Or did I commit a sin by humbling myself so that you might be exalted? because I preached the gospel of God to you for free of charge. I robbed other churches by taking pay from them to minister to you. When I was present with you and in need, I did not burden anyone, since the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied my needs. I have kept myself and will keep myself from burdening, burdening you in any way. As the truth of Christ is in me, this boasting of mine will not be stopped in the regions of Achaia. Why? Because I don't love you? God knows I do. But I will continue to do what I am doing in order to deny an opportunity to those who want to be regarded as our equals in what they boast about. For such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, 
disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no great surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will be according to their works. I repeat, let no one consider me a fool. But if you do, at least accept me as a fool, so that I can also boast a little. What I am saying in this matter of boasting, I don't speak as the Lord would, but, as it were, foolishly. Since many boast according to the flesh, I will also boast. For you, being so wise, gladly put up with fools. In fact, you put up with it if someone enslaves you, if someone exploits you, if someone takes advantage of you, if someone is arrogant toward you, if someone slaps you in the face. I say this to our shame. We have been too weak for that. But in whatever anyone dares to boast, I'm talking foolishly, I also dare. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I'm talking like a madman. I'm a better one, with far more labors, many more imprisonments, far worse beatings, many times near death. Five times I received the 40 lashes minus one from the Jews. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked. I have spent a night and a day in the open sea. On frequent journeys, I faced dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my own people, dangers from Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers at sea and dangers among false brothers. Toil and hardship, many sleepless nights, hunger and thirst, often without food, cold and without clothing. Not to mention other things, there is the daily pressure on me, my concern for all the churches. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is made to stumble and I do not burn with indignation? If boasting is necessary, I will boast about my weaknesses. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, who is blessed forever, knows I am not lying. In Damascus, a ruler under King Aratas guarded the city of Damascus in order to arrest me. So I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped from his hands. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. Now I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.